Hi, this is Garrison Wolf, and welcome to Modern Music Composition, <laughs> where today we're going to talk about first species counterpoint. So what is first species counterpoint? Well, it's where you take a melody, we'll call it the, historically it's called the cantus firmus, let's just call it our bass melody. So we take this bass melody that you've created, and we build either on top of it or below it a second melody, where with respect to first species uh, counterpoint, these are going to be whole notes. So we're going to build a melody with whole notes, and then that second melody, we're going, going to be using certain rules that are associated with first species counterpoint to build that second melody. We're going to build it on top of the uh, bass melody. And for the most part, the melody that we build is going to be all consonant with respect to that first melody. That means you're going to be using unisons, thirds, um, perfect fifths, sixths, and octaves. And so um, let's talk about building that first melody, the bass melody. There's two schools of thought when you put together a melody. First school usually is associated with you think of a chord progression and then you take out of that chord progression uh, a melody. The second school of thought is you just generate a melody based on your imagination, based on um, whatever you think a good melody might sound like. Um, the million dollar melody. <laughs> These are difficult things to come up with and I believe that's the methodology to come up with a really good melody is just on your own using your own imagination, not thinking necessarily about chord progression chord progressions, um, just come up with something that sounds cool and then you'll build harmony into it later. So in building that first melody, let's go over just a couple of rules that are associated with building a good smooth melody. So I've written out here um, just a, a real small basic melody. The rules for how a melody progresses through time, there are a couple things to think about. The, the first thing is, well, first of all, let's say, so I'm in G clef here. Um, I've got here a C, a D, and then a B to a C. Well, if I'm in any major scale, every major scale has a leading tone. If I'm in C, the leading tone is B. If I'm in, um, uh, G, the leading tone is F sharp. If I'm in D, the leading tone is C sharp. If I'm in A, the leading tone is G sharp. Um, so the, the first rule is step seven, which is the leading tone, moves to step eight. It's a natural progression for the leading tone to move straight into the key that, that you're in. So we've got B moving to C. The second um, rule is um, step six, which um, moves to step five. And, and if we're in the key of C, step, step six is an A, that's going to move down to uh, five. So I'm sorry if, if I uh, misspoke. Step seven moves, actually it moves up. It always moves up to, to eight. Step six always moves down to five. And then step four, which is F, always moves down to three. Now I showed these in terms of what is called a step. A step in distance is usually either a minor second or a major second. Anything above that is called a skip <laughs> or a leap. <laughs> um, but in general, a step is a major second or a minor second and a uh, skip is anything from a minor third on up. So once you move into um, the uh, key that you're in, or if you go to um, the third position in, in the scale step, or the fifth position in the scale step, notice that we've got, we'll call this the root, Okay, which is eight. The third and the fifth. Well, what did we learn from before? If we have a root, a third, and a fifth, what is that? That's a major triad. Okay, so what, what did we do in our melody? 
we took steps in it and created ones which would move to a major triad. That's called resolution. So seven resolves to eight, four resolves down to three, and six resolves down to five. That's usually always the case in tonal music. Um, now you can take greater steps, i.e. you can take um, leaps or skips. <laughs> and um, another natural thing to do is to actually skip seven up a third to two, or four would go down to two, or six would go down to a three. I'm sorry, six would go down to a four. So we've got, these are, these are, these are in thirds then. Seven would go to a two, it would go up to a two, six would go down to a four, and four would go down to a two. So, like I said, in, in, in creating a good melody, these are definitely some rules to think about. Also, I, I mentioned in my first video that every melody has a high point. And in this case, here's your high point. It's always good, and it always has a low point, too. Here, here happens to be G is, is the low point. For every high, there's a low. <laughs> um, th those are just some general remarks in, in building a good melody. And so I think it's important to really think about this stuff and understand how this resolution works. This is actually called an active step. A seven would be as the set, step seven, six, and four are all active steps. They move into, let's not call it necessarily an inactive step because when you move to the root or the fifth or the third, from there, you can move in any direction. So steps one, which, which is actually a call, the same as an eight, that you were just an octave away. Steps one, three, and five can move in any direction. So think about your melody. Think about something that's smooth, doesn't have too much jaggedness to it, has a single high, a single low, and build one out um, three, in three or four measures, three, four measures uh, uh, long. In the next video, I'm going to get in, into building a first species counterpoint. And remember that that second melody that's built on the cantus firmus, on the bass melody, is harmonious in terms of consonances, always in consonances. Okay, so that means that we'll be, once again, we'll be using the unisons, thirds, uh, perfect fifths, sixths, and, and, and octaves. So that's it for now, and we'll see you later.